The Evercade, the brand new cartridge-based handheld, has a lot of people intrigued right now, myself included. You know, I was kind of skeptical at first, but the more and more information we get, the more publishers, the cartridges that are announced, the pictures of prototypes and videos that have been being shared by the company is really getting a lot of people excited. And today, my friends, we have another exclusive announcement to go over concerning a brand new cartridge with 20 games holy crap 20 games on it so we're going to take a look at that in a second but to familiarize yourselves with this real quick this is like i said cartridge based handheld has hdmi 4.3 inch screen uh 8 and 16 bit games a lot of cool stuff going on so far they have atari namco interplay data east and mega cat studios with another company that we're announcing today and possibly another one in the very near future as well because i know they've said that they should be announcing two publishers uh, this month, so we'll have to wait and see what the next one is gonna be, but they're continually teasing us with a lot of things. So they have shared some images that I find pretty neat. These are all prototype images. Um, you can be up to date on this stuff, follow them on Twitter. I'll put a link in the description, but here they're showing off the D-pad a little bit, uh, looking pretty nice, like a little roller rocker D-pad, more Sega style than anything. I know a lot of people prefer that again, prototype images uh, and they showcased uh, some pictures of what the cartridge cases are going to look like uh, pretty neat stuff a lot of people dig those kind of things myself included instead of just having a cartridge in a cardboard box you know hey these plastic cases they sit nice on a shelf if you want to keep everything on a shelf another prototype image uh, showing a cartridge inserted uh, just the form factor looking pretty cool I really dig these shots though where they're holding it in their hands because you get a, a good idea like this thing looks huge. It looks huge. 4.3 inch screen, really looking awesome. And this was one picture I really liked because seeing this person's hands holding it, I'm like, this is a nice sized device. Playing some Earthworm Jim right there. Pretty cool stuff. Here's another shot, really slick looking. Um, like I said, these are not final things. These are all prototypes, but so far looking pretty good. Another little shot of them taking some promo shots, right? Another one there. Like I said, if you wanna keep up the date, on this stuff, definitely follow them on Twitter. Uh, they also showcased a little video. Let's take a look at that real quick. So right here, they're showing kind of like the viewing angles. Doesn't have like the bezel on the front, it's just prototype. Just gotta keep pointing that out. This is not a final product here, but I do dig how the screen viewing angle looks pretty good. We're not getting the side to side yet, but the up and down definitely looking nice in my opinion. So pretty cool stuff there. So now on to the new publisher that's announced, or I'm announcing right now with the 20 games. It's one that I've been pushing for. I've been like, hey guys, what's going on? Can we get this company? They got some pretty cool games. So I've been throwing it out there. A lot of other people have been throwing it out there. And I've mentioned it in pretty much all my videos concerning the Evercade, and that is going to be Pico Interactive, my friends. Collection one, officially licensed 20 game cartridge. There's a lot of cool stuff on here, some rarities, things that were never released, uh, prototypes, uh, translated games. Pretty much every genre is covered, which I thought was pretty neat. So let's go ahead and take a look at this list of games and some footage from each one of them. So first up, we've got Brave Battle Saga. It's a traditional Japanese style RPG, features an automatic turn-based battle system modeled after Final Fantasy, and Breath of Fire, and an open, continuous game world similar to Secret of Mana. Its story features a mixture of fantasy and sci-fi elements, it takes place in a post-technological society long after humanity has forgotten about the technology that nearly destroyed the species millennia ago. The protagonist, Tim, accidentally uncovers a cache of ancient technology which ends up involving him and his allies in a quest to prevent an evil empire from seizing the ability to activate ancient weaponry. So hey, it sounds fairly stereotypical of a lot of JRPGs, but I thought this one was pretty neat. I have played it. They do have cartridges. Uh, Pico has sold cartridges for some of these games, not all of them. And they, you know, they can cost a little bit, definitely some cool stuff to have. And I think it's really neat to have all these games in like one little cartridge. So moving forward, I thought that one was pretty cool. Love the graphic style. Next one up. Water Margin, A Tale of Clouds and Wind. So you're fighting an army of evil, 
and risking your own life here. Play as one of three heroes with specific moves and features. So you're facing off against some formidable warriors who will show no mercy to your ass. So you could play with yourself, <laughs> really? Or with a friend. Slice through the woods and fight your way through hordes of enemies. You have different magic to put, you know, your enemies down. The end of the game will be different. The ending of the game will be different depending on the level of difficulty you choose. So pretty cool little beat em up action going on. Next one, Dork and Imp. Dork and Imp is pretty neat. I have played this one. Uh, it's an unreleased Super Nintendo game developed back in the 90s by a Swedish company called Norse. The game is pretty difficult and challenging, but hardcore gamers may just have some fun with this one. So, a bunch of features and updates done to this unreleased game to make it a complete game. Uh, so, all the bugs, a bunch of bugs were in the original, like, prototype. All that stuff was fixed. Added a whole new world and levels, the volcano level. They have a menu, cutscenes, and endings. Uh, implemented a password system, designed, developed, and Im implemented uh, boss fights according to the original game story. Organized the game to be uh, able to be played with continuity, continuity, over 40 levels, 10 hours of gameplay. Man, there you go. The game is a puzzle action uh, adventure platformer in which you got to help Dork and Imp to do some errands for your evil master wizard in exchange of training you and teaching you his magic spells. So if you've ever played the prototype, I've played the prototype of this very incomplete game, and it's typically the prototype was in sections. So this is the complete game. Really cool stuff to see that. Next one up is another one that I have uh, taken a look at on the channel and there was a cartridge of, is Switchblade. Uh, the Fireblade, sacred symbol of the ancient Switchblade clan has been smashed into 16 pieces by the evil Havoc. But they say that a hero can save it. And as hero, you must retrieve the 16 pieces and restore your people's pride. The gameplay is platform and ladders based set both inside and outside. The layout of the territories become visible as you progress and they contain bonus weapons and secret rooms. And unlike the sequel, you start with weaponry and this is gained directly rather than you collecting coins and trading them at shop sections. Holding down fire progressively builds up your fighting power. I've played this one. It is pretty neat. Uh, some people dig it. Not for everybody. I thought it was kind of a neat game. Definitely an interesting one for sure. So next up... Way of the Exploding Fist, uh, or also known as just Exploding Fist, is a pretty neat one. It's like a old school, like fighting game, like like kung fu type stuff. So you become a master of the mysterious ancient arts by progressing from a novice to tenth dan and test your strength and discipline. You can control your character with either joystick or keyboard. This description is from a, a different version of it, apparently. Um, but you do use D-pad and buttons, and there's different combinations to do different blocks, flying kicks, uh, leg sweeps, roundhouses, somersaults to dodge attacks. It's it's a really cool game, pretty interesting stuff. It's an unreleased game. Um, it's been improved, finished up from its original prototype state, and it's pretty cool. I've played it a little bit. It is a neat one. Definitely cool to see that. The next one, which I think is a pretty awesome game, and I have played this, is Nightshade. Uh, so the description states, Sutek has gotten rid of the local superhero Vortex, and now Metro City is in the hands of crime. You are Nightshade, the superhero that nobody knows. And your goal is to stop the evildoers, including main, including main villain Sutek. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but whatever. Nightshade is a humorous action uh, adventure game with a menu that allows the protagonist to perform various actions. Also included are some one-on-one -on -one fight scenes, which differ from the standard controls in which Nightshade is able to jump, kick, and punch. So I thought this one was pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of Deja Vu, but actually you can move around your character. A lot more to it than Deja Vu. Uh, really cool game. Welcome addition. And then another one that I've played and uh, demonstrated on the channel before is Tinhead. On the edge of the universe, the evil, evil intergalactic goblin Grim Squidge has captured and imprisoned all the stars. He has now scattered them across the faraway planets. While this is happening, a nearby space station picks up a distress signal. Tinhead, guardian of the edge of the universe, hears the cries for help and hurries to the rescue. It's a platform game. Some exploration is required to find the exit or to gather extra health or points. Attacking enemies is done by shooting them with a small metal orb that comes out of Tinhead's head. Who would have thought? So pretty cool stuff. 
Um, really neat. I've played it. It's a it's an interesting one. Radical Rex, which is another one I think is pretty awesome, and I have played it. So Radical Rex can use the skateboard or glide down hills, jump, kick, and breathe fire. Pretty cool stuff. So there's a bunch of things to collect, eggs, health, power-ups, uh, different fire breathing and screaming abilities. There's checkpoints in the game. Uh, there's like after each level, there's a Bomberman-like sequence to earn extra continues. Pretty cool game. I've played it. Graphics are really slick, I thought. The next one is one that I know a lot of people have talked about in the past, uh, and this is definitely an interesting one. Jim Power, The Lost Dimensions. My God, you're either going to love it or hate this game, but I think it is pretty interesting. A lot of people have hit me up. Hey, have you played this game? It is like nuts with the way the backgrounds scroll. Uh, but you play as special agent Jim Power, the supernatural alien. Uh, the supernatural alien Vaprek threatens to destroy our, or defeat our world, which is the last planet that stands between him and Dimensional Vortex. The Vortex leads to a fifth and up until now lost dimension. So you gotta defeat him. His forces are far too strong for us to defeat and frontal attacks, which is why we must send you to slip past his Omni Eye Scanners and make an assassination attempt on the greatest evil, evil man ever known. We'll take absolutely all your wits and skill, but it is imperative that you kick his ass, guys. Really interesting game. I know a lot of people have played this one. The next one, Eight Eyes. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this one. Really looks like uh, Castlevania, right? Eight Eyes is set in a post-apocalyptic future. Mankind is recovering from hundreds of years of chaos and nuclear war, and civilization is being rebuilt by the great king who harnesses the power of eight jewels. The jewels known as the Eight Eyes were formed at the sensors of eight nuclear explosions that came close to destroying Earth. The Eight Eyes have mysterious powers, which in the wrong hands could bring about the end of the world. The Great King's eight power-hungry dukes steal the jewels for themselves and banish the king to the nuclear wastelands. That's not cool, man. Uh, so the player, you control Orin the Falconer and his fighting falcon, Cutrus. His mission is to infiltrate Duke's eight castles and retrieve the eight eyes. With the help of Cutrus, you must fight the Duke's soldiers and a bunch of other enemies. After the jewels have been recovered, you must return them to the Altar of Peace so that the Great King may return and finish rebuilding the Earth. Woohoo, right? That's what I'm talking about. A pretty cool and interesting game. Um, I've played it quite a bit. Uh, very Castlevania-esque, right? The next one, in The Immortal. Uh, it's an isometric adventure game. The main plot revolves around a wizard attempting to find his mentor in a large and dangerous labyrinth. This ga The game is known for its high degree of gra graphic violence, along with its punishing difficulty. It does have some crazy death scenes. It's a very interesting one. Uh, the game begins with the player in control of an unnamed wizard. Uh, the game just kind of starts, throws you into the mix of it. In the first room, the player is given the option of viewing the image of the character's mentor, another wizard named Mortim Mortimer. He is calling for help from the deep below in the labyrinth, though he is attempting to communicate to another man named Dunrig. Really interesting game, for sure. The next one, Dragon View. Dragon View is an action role-playing game and a follow-up to Draken. You're gonna you're gonna catch on to that in a second. Like its predecessor, it features a 3D overworld navigated from a first-person perspective. Towns and dungeons, however, are presented as side-scrolling areas. So this is like a big improvement over Draken. Draken's an interesting game, but this one really built upon that. Um, as Alex, you can jump and fight enemies, appearing in dungeons with a sword or other weapons. Experience points are awarded for vanquishing enemies. Your strength and defense parameters increase when leveling up. Uh, your HP and your magic points increase by finding specific items. It's also possible to find magical rings and weapon upgrades. Really a cool sequel um, to a, the previous version, Draken. It really improved on a lot. Um, next one, Power Punch 2, Mark Tough Guy Tyler. I know this game has a history, man. We'll have to dig into this at some time. As the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world with an Olympic gold medal, 33 knockouts. Wow. After knocking out another opponent with ease, Tyler and his manager taunt the world by saying that no one can stop him. However, the broadcast is picked up far from Earth in the outer reaches of the universe by an alien boxer promoter for the Intergalactic Boxing Federation. So, hey, you got to prove your worth, right? Very interesting game, very reminiscent of Punch-Out, obviously. A lot of people do dig this one. Next one, Draken. What? Should have talked about this one earlier, right? So Draken's a role-playing game with a visual presentation that combines 3D landscape and 2D interiors. 
Uh, the player's party will travel over land on a flat terrain made up of vectors in which 2D objects are zoomed. Player will, will encounter monsters and fight them in real-time combat and discover the palaces of the Dragon Lords. Uh, indoors, the players have to find a way through the maze of chambers, solving puzzles, defeating minions. Party members are depicted in four status windows on the left side of the screen, thus allowing to see their current status and equipment at once. Pretty interesting game. I do prefer the other one, the, you know, what was the Dragon View? That game is really awesome. This one is pretty cool too. Definitely unique style. So the next one, this one I have a lot of personal experience with. I remember renting this one from Blockbuster quite a bit and then eventually buying it back in the day. Power Pigs of the Dark Age. It's a 2D action platformer uh, game. The game takes place during the Dark Ages, obviously, in control of a group of humanoid pigs. The player's object is to defeat a warlock named Wizard of Wolf. Wolf. A humanoid wolf with strange magical powers. So there you go. Really interesting game. Um, the setting is neat. Playing as some pigs fighting some wolves. I don't know. I thought it was cool, man. It was one of my uh, games that I really dug back in the day. Uh, one of my, I wouldn't really say one of my top favorites, but it's one that's always stuck in my brain because uh, I really did enjoy it back when it was out. The next one. So Iron Commando, it's a pretty interesting game. It's a brawler beat em up with lots of weapons and big ass end bosses. Uh, pretty typical, but really neat looking. The graphic style, everything that's going on with the game. Um, previously, I believe it was only a prototype that was out there and this is a full complete game. So definitely awesome. Uh, so as the player or players multiplayer game, uh, you walk along the levels beating up enemies. On some levels, you ride a motorcycle, a Jeep, even a mini cart, shoot your way through hordes of enemies. There's a bunch of end bosses, some screen filling like a helicopter and a giant robot. Uh, when I played the game, I remember fighting like a car or something. Pretty neat, has a lot going on for a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. So there you go. The next one, The Humans, is a puzzle game. So hey, we got a lot of genres covered here. Uh, the game consists of the player manipulating the given amounts of humans per level using their skills and tools to achieve the level goals. Goals are different per level, but you know, usually consist of finding something, killing a dinosaur, or helping like a specific uh, human get to the end goal. Uh, it's a pretty neat game if you're into puzzle games. This is one that I have enjoyed in the past. I thought it was pretty neat. Next one up is another one that I've uh, taken a look at the cartridge of, Canon Legend of the New Gods. It's a strategy RPG. Uh, which consists of battles and cutscenes to advance the story. Navigation is possible only during battles or as instant travel between locations on a world map. Uh, during the battles, the player moves the heroes over the top-down battlefield, attacking enemies, uh, you know, defending or using magic whenever they're in range. You gain experience points every time you attack, do an action, so you can level up during the middle of a battle. It is a really interesting game, especially if you're really into strategy RPGs. Uh, it's one of those ones, I believe it was translated and brought over by Pico. So really cool to see something like that on this collection. Uh, next up, we have a Magical Girl or Magic Girl. They don't have a description or pictures on here yet. But from my sleuthing actions, Magic Girl is a fast-paced vertical shooter, which is set in outer space that has a variety of enemies, bosses, and weapon upgrades. You play as a Magical Girl who, after losing her family and friends to an alien invasion, is forced to seek vengeance and protect those who remain. You're equipped, equipped with magical shots, bombs, and have a life bar that depletes as you get hit. So pretty cool. You got a little vertical shooter action. Uh, this is one that I've really not seen a lot of information on, have never actually played it myself, but it does look pretty neat. So the final game is another one that we don't have a description for yet, which is Top Racer. And from my sleuthing, Top Racer is actually the Japanese version of Top Gear. So obviously it's a racing game. Uh, in this game, you choose to race as several different cars and the cars have different specs for max speed, tire grip, uh, seconds from zero to 60 and fuel consumption. During races, you have nitros you can use for speed boosts uh, and there's pit stops that you can go to like little pits that you could stop at to refuel. So you're racing through different nations, tempting to become the fastest driver in the world. So really a very, very solid set of games in my opinion. Uh, link will be in the description if you wanna take a look at this stuff. Follow Evercade on Twitter. They're always showcasing a lot of neat stuff, but here's the list of games that we're getting. Brave Battle Saga, Water March and Magic Girl, Dork and Imp, Switchblade, Way of the Exploding Fist, Nightshade, Top Racer, Tinhead, Radical Rex, 
Gym Power, Eight Ice, The Immortal, Dragon View, Draken, Power Punch 2, Power Pigs, Iron Commando, The Humans, and Canon, Legend of the New Gods. A solid ass set of games. Holy crap. A lot of role playing strategy stuff on there, but you got some platforming, some action, some racing, a uh, lot of interesting stuff going on here. Some fighting action, puzzle action. This set, this cartridge is going to be like. I hate to say it. I mean, I don't hate to say it, but I think this is probably going to be one of the most popular cartridges because these games are not easily accessible by the masses, by retro gamers, and there is a ton of interesting stuff going on here. So, hey, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me for this exclusive look. Little little snippets of gameplay for all 20 of these games. Hope you enjoyed it. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And with that said, I will. Catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye-byes, and boom. Bye.